the main ingredient in tofu, plant-based milk, and veggie burgers. Today, the popularity of soy foods is booming, especially among vegetarians. Except meat eaters unwittingly consume a lot of soybean. There is hidden soy, hidden soy in, uh, in our fridges, in the products we consume, especially the products coming from animals, dairy products, meat, eggs. And uh, WWF assessed a few years ago that there is roughly 60 kilograms of hidden soy in every fridge for every European that we consume every year, basically. The growing demand for soy is not driven by vegetarians, but by the world's insatiable appetite for meat. Of the 284 million tons of soy produced annually, 75% is used as animal feed. Only 6% is turned directly into food for human consumption. Let's take a look at this typical breakfast menu. To make 100 grams of bacon, you'll need 51 grams of soy, 25 grams for 100 grams of cheese, 7 grams to produce a small bottle of milk. As a result, more than 1 million square kilometers of land are dedicated to growing soy, an area almost three times the size of Germany. And if you're in Europe, where half of soybean imports come from South America, chances are the soy on your plate comes from a place that looks like this. Burnt woodlands in the Gran Chaco the second largest forest in South America after the Amazon rainforest, covering 110 million hectares of land across Argentina, Paraguay, and Bolivia. Over the last decade, it's become the new hotspot for deforestation. Approximately 8 million hectares of the forest in the Gran Chaco has already been cleared. This is a land mass that corresponds to approximately three times the size of Belgium. If the rate of deforestation continues at the current levels, we are projected to lose over half of the bird species within one or two decades. And we are also on the course of losing 30% of all the mammals that live in the Grand Chaco if we continue at the same pace. And things could get worse as global soy production is predicted to double by 2050. So what exactly is fueling deforestation? Environmentalists say the nature of the global soy supply chain is to blame. Let's go back to the Grand Chaco. Because of its remote location, farmers sell their soy to transporters, who then take it to ports like Rosario, also a transit point for soy from Paraguay. All this soy is then bulked and bought by international agribusiness companies like Cargill and Bungi, who will export it and sell it to meat and dairy producers across the Atlantic. In other words, it's almost impossible to track a single soybean. It is impossible to know exactly which farms the soy comes from unless you have a completely vertically integrated supply chain, unless you own and know exactly and segregate your produce from farm right the way through processing uh, to port of import. So the lack of traceability around the production and supply chains of soy is definitely a factor that hides or masks deforestation and other uh, environmental and social impacts associated with the unsustainable production of commodities like soy. And it's not just the bulldozing of forests that is problematic. Most farms in Argentina produce genetically modified soybeans, which are commonly sprayed with controversial herbicide glyphosate. Using transgenic soy to feed animals is legal in the European Union. This soy has to be labeled GMO, but buying ham made from pigs fed with GMO soy doesn't. Certain labels now seek to certify that soy is sustainable, meaning deforestation-free and non-GMO. For critics, though, this is not enough, as big traders are not required to track the origin of soy. But could the solution be right here, on European soil? Instead of importing soy, we could produce our own. In France, at least, the local soy industry is rapidly expanding. Soy can pretty much grow anywhere, from tropical regions all the way to the northern hemisphere. In France, we've set ourselves an objective, which is to double our soybean production in the next three to five years. The industry needs to be encouraged to do so, whether it's agricultural or R&D policies. 
And then there's our role as consumers, reaffirming our desire for locally grown produce and perhaps accepting to spend a little more on the chicken, tofu and eggs that we buy. The closer you are, the easier it is to know where the soy comes from. Once companies accept to be monitored by independent organizations, we can know how they've grown their soybean, where did it go, how was it separated from other grains. It's a lot easier to do locally than over long distances with soy coming from far-off places. Growing sustainable soybean and improving the traceability of the supply chain are key. But consumers also have their share of responsibility. And it starts with the food on our dinner tables. To limit our impact on foreign ecosystems, there may be one simple solution, eating a little less meat.